Hello everyone! Welcome to Relatively Refined. My name is Patty. I am the youngest of the Relatively Refined sisters and today we are celebrating all things Vermont maple syrup. Hi everyone! Well it is officially spring so here in Vermont we are celebrating all things maple. This is the time of year when we honor <laughs> the liquid gold that is Vermont maple syrup, or syrup, depending on how you like to pronounce it. I actually pronounce it both ways. I think growing up, we pronounced it syrup, and in my adult life, I call it maple syrup. So, but anyway, we are going to be talking all things maple. I'm gonna take you with me to a Vermont maple sugar open house. Vermont Maple Open House, where we're going to tour the sugar house and see the various Vermont maple products. And we're even going to make a maple recipe when we get back. But uh, we are for sure getting to that open house today because it is absolutely beautiful. Yesterday, it snowed all day and we I couldn't get out of my driveway. But today is a beautiful, sunny, crisp, absolutely perfect day to go and tour the sugar house. So why don't you grab a cup of coffee, make yourself comfortable, and let's get going. This particular weekend is Maple Open House weekend in several of the neighboring sugaring operations. And what that means is the sugaring operations open up their sugar houses uh, to the public. So it is a nice educational opportunity to learn about the process of making maple syrup. You can tour the sugar houses, you can sample the products, and you can meet the local farmers. So it's a really fun and interesting weekend. And yesterday, because of the storm, we didn't go. So today is the perfect day to visit an open house. And we are headed to Gagne Maple in Swanton, Vermont. And the great state of Vermont leads the nation in maple syrup production with over 2.5 million gallons produced annually. Maple sugaring sure has changed through the years. I grew up in a village in southern Vermont and we did have a big sugar maple tree in our front yard and our neighbor would tap the tree um, with a metal tap and a bucket and then he would collect the sap and make syrup and usually at the end of the season we would get a bottle of it. And I do remember tasting the sap and thinking that this didn't taste like maple syrup at all. Um, there is not, is certainly not nearly as high sugar content in the sap as there is in the syrup. And also the production, so it's about 40 gallons of sap to one gallon of syrup. So that was also very surprising to see how many buckets would have to be emptied in order to get just a little bit of that liquid gold maple syrup. And just to back up a little bit, you'll hear me talking a lot about the maple sap. And I realize that uh, some people may not be familiar with that. what that is. 
and that is the clear watery liquid that is extracted from the maple trees. Um, in our case, the sugar maples. And it flows here in the early spring from about late February into April. And we have the ideal climate for this because we have cold winters, but uh, eventually the days warm up. And so the ideal, the ideal temperature for sap production is a warm day and cool night and particularly like to see it temperatures over 40 during the day that really gets the sap flowing and then of course it's collected by tapping the trees and I'm oversimplifying here but it then becomes boiled down to the maple syrup but I'm going to go a little bit more into the process when we get to the sugar house you'll be able to see the reverse osmosis system and the tanks where it is boiled. But that is sort of a basic overview of the production. And again, there's that rule of 40 where we like it over 40 degrees during the day and 40 gallons of maple sap equals one gallon of maple syrup. We are almost at Gagne Maples and I just wanted to say how much I appreciate the agritourism movement here in Vermont. It really is so nice that these local farmers open up their operations to the public so we can learn and appreciate what we have right here in our great state. And I am told that Gagne Maples has about 30,000 taps, although at this particular operation that we're going to, I think they may have a little more than half of that. So I think they have about 17,000 taps, if I'm not mistaken. We have arrived and you know they are boiling when you see this beautiful sight against the bright blue sky. These small bottles of maple syrup represent the progression of the season. So the lighter colored syrup shows up at the beginning of the season when the sap is just starting to run. And as the season progresses, the syrup gets darker in color. This is also how the maple syrup is graded. It is graded based upon the light transmission. So if it is a darker color and less light coming through, it is graded as either dark or very dark. And if there is 50 to 75 or even over 75% light coming through, it could be classified as golden or amber. And in a sugar bush, which is the stand of maple trees, sugar maple trees, the um, sap is collected via lines versus the buckets that you may have seen. This is just way too big of an operation for that. That would not be efficient. And speaking of efficiency, this operation uses a reverse osmosis system, which really improves the speed at which the maple syrup can be produced because the reverse osmosis system removes a good amount of the water before it even goes in for boiling. So that reduces the amount of time that it needs to boil because a lot of the water is already removed before it goes in to boil. And now we're heading into my favorite part of the sugar house. This is what you think of when you think of a sugar house. 
This is the evaporation process. This is where the maple sap is boiled off. Now remember, this has already been through the reverse osmosis, so a lot of the water is already removed. And it's boiled off in shallow pans until it reaches the desired sugar content. And it's actually measured through density and it will automatically shut off. Now don't hold me to this because I'm going from what I remember when I was in the sugar house, but I believe it has to reach above a 66% sugar content to be considered syrup. So at that point, the system will stop boiling and this can go into the tank and be filtered and then bottled. And one of the really cool things about the open house is getting to see the different grades of maple syrup. And remember, the lighter color is usually earlier in the season with the first run of sap. And then it gets progressively darker as the season progresses. And there's not a huge noticeable difference in taste. It does get a little bit deeper and richer in flavor as the season progresses. And you can see from the samples here that the darker color one was definitely more popular. I went for that amber colored one mid season and I can tell you right now it was delicious. There are so many things you can do with maple syrup. Here are some of the products that they sell. And I did also try a sample of the maple cream. It was delicious and it is so good. I have purchased this before. It is so good for breakfast on an English muffin. Delicious. And we did end up buying some syrup because I do have something I wanna make with some and we were out. So the timing of this trip was perfect. This image is so nostalgic. It is quintessential Vermont this time of year in March to see the sap boiling, to see the smokestacks, and really it's the smell for me that brings it all back. For a long time when we got back to the house, my coat had the smell of the, the, maple, the maple smoke smell and I just can't describe how good and nostalgic that was for me. I forgot to mention that in addition to all the other wonderful things at this open house, there were homemade maple donuts. They were actually homemade donuts with a maple glaze they were so good. So a couple of those are coming home with us for sure. I would really encourage you to check out Maple Open Houses. If you are in Vermont visiting or if you live here and you happen to be here during maple sugar season, I really encourage you to check out those Maple Open Houses. The maple sugar producers and farmers are so incredibly proud and knowledgeable about their product and the process. And they are available to answer any questions. And I had a million of them. It was just so interesting. There's a lot of science to it. And I, I just was fascinated by the whole process. I think you will find the Vermont maple farmers to be warm and welcoming. And like I said, incredibly proud of the product that they produce. And here's a fun fact. Vermont is the only state whose IHOP carries real maple syrup.
Well, the drive home was just as beautiful as the drive there. And somehow I managed to not eat the donuts that were sitting on my lap. And here they are. Let's make some maple coffee creamer. I don't typically add sweetener to my coffee. I use half and half or heavy cream, but no sweetener. But every now and then I do like a little bit of flavored creamer and I thought it would be nice to make a homemade coffee creamer using the maple syrup that we just purchased. All right, everyone, I have been wanting to make this maple coffee creamer for a while. And now that we are back with this gorgeous Vermont maple syrup, I am ready to make it. It is so easy, literally could not be easier. So I'm gonna just grab one of my quart mason jars and I'm adding two cups of half and half. And to that, I'm going to add one fourth of a cup of maple syrup. I'm just gonna pour it right into this. And that will get the rest of the heavy cream out as well. Excuse me, the half and half. And I think I might just add a little bit more. And finally, one teaspoon of vanilla extract. This is the vanilla extract that my sister made and sent to me, my sister Paula made and sent to me for Christmas. It is the best. And I will leave a link to the video where she makes it. Also couldn't be easier, but makes a phenomenal gift. And that is it. <laughs> I'm just gonna put a lid on this and I'm gonna give it a good and vigorous shake. Get all of that maple syrup mixed in with the half and half and the vanilla. And this I will store in the refrigerator for my coffee. That could not be easier. Let's give it a try. I'm also popping in here to add that this creamer is excellent in a frother. It is so good. So if you have a frother, go ahead and put this in and add it to your coffee. Delicious. I definitely need a donut to go with this. So I'm pretty sure this is the best coffee creamer I have ever had. And I really encourage you to go ahead and make some. Really, really good. Just the right amount of sweet, creamy. It's really excellent. Go ahead and give it a try. All right, everyone, I am just about to dig into this delicious maple donut. I actually warmed it up for a few seconds, so I'm really looking forward to that and washing it down with a delicious cup of coffee with the maple coffee creamer that we made together. So I want to thank you so much for watching today's video. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up. 
If you haven't subscribed, please do so and hit that notification bell because from time to time, we upload extra videos, so you will not want to miss those. All right, everyone, thank you so much for spending time with me today, and we'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye now.